will be receiving uh, the word of God from the Lord. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, there are uh, there are many uh, many of our brothers and sisters. They are uh, uh, traveling, and uh, uh, let us pray for them. And some of them are working. Let us pray for them. I mean, uh, God may uh, pour out His blessings upon them as they are traveling uh, back, maybe on Sunday or Monday. So uh, we'll be praying for them also. And uh, let us, uh, I mean, uh, uh, go back to the, the the portions that we were uh, discussing uh, in the uh, previous class. I mean, uh, how many of you remember what was the uh, the portions that we already covered uh, uh, in the last uh, class? Can anyone say that it was it was something like uh, uh, the specific uh, uh, futures of the uh, book of Revelation, and uh, in that. Uh, we have been <clears throat> discussing about many, many points, and then after that, some more other headings also were there. Uh, any one person can uh, uh, say that. Who can say what are the I mean, main headings and main points? Who is ready to say? Lift your hands. Yes, yeah, setting is ready. Yeah? Amy George is there? No, no, yeah. Cedric is ready. He can say last time I said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amy. Okay. Amy said. Okay. Cedric, go on. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, the symbolic languages was mentioned. In the completed and controversial topic, yeah, and the whole revelations is a complicated and controversial topic, right? So there's huge number of visions and dreams that are mentioned. Uh, mainly the <clears throat> alle allegorical language. Allegorical, yeah. Yeah, from the book of Ezekiel, Daniel, and book of Zechariah is also covered. The vindictive language, or in other words, the language of revenge is also uh, used in Revelation. And then a lot of code language is also used in Revelation. And then the question did arise, why did John use the code language? He used it mainly for protecting the church to connect with the Old Testament and to let them know the seriousness of the second coming of Jesus. And then in the, there are many similarities in the letter that was also mentioned between written in uh, Revelations, John, yeah, in areas. Uh, the word apocalypse was also discussed, meaning it means revelation or unveiling mysteries or revealing hidden things, unlocking the facts, and all, all these were part of the introduction. And then we also went into a little bit of history of why Christian churches were destroyed in Turkey. Uh, first of all, it was persecuted, Muslim invasion, then the Roman emperors conquered and destroyed it. Then another reason was Caesar worship. So Roman emperors, we went through different uh, emperors like uh, Augustus, then Tiberius came, then Caligus came, then Claudius came. Nero ruled between AD 54 and 68, then uh, Vespasian and Titus, then Emperor, Emperor Domitian is the finally. And then we also mentioned about the different diversions that was coming up, as well as extreme love to Jesus attracted to idol worship. This all crept into Christianity or the people of the way. This was all part of the introduction, and then we started on chapter one. Yeah, chapter, okay. one chapter one, uh, maybe Amy George will be sharing something because uh, she's ready to share that from chapter one. Amy George. Yeah, Amy. Yeah. From chapter one. Yeah, so it says, uh, How does revelation come to men? So it revelation it begins from, with God, and revelation is given to us through Jesus Christ. Revelation sent to you uh, through John uh, was sent to John through the angel, and finally revelation is given to John. So that is because John's intimacy um, with God has uh, like God due to his intimacy with God Jesus. Uh, that's why it was revealed to him. Very. 
yeah, both of you did very well, and uh, uh, thank you for explaining all those things. And uh, uh, so we have been just uh, closing with the word that uh, at last John received the revelation because he was so close to God and he was uh, having the intimacy with God. That was the reason that God uh, selected him and uh, sent him to the uh, island of Patmos and he was receiving the visions and the dreams and uh, the messages for the seven churches in Asia Minor. So we have to think about when we, are, we have the close relationship with God, God will reveal the mysteries of the word of God, the truth of the word of God. So that will be a blessing for every one of us. So let us be close to the Lord. Let us have that close relationship with God every time in our Christian life. I mean, God bless you. Now we are going to the, uh, uh, to the verse 3 of chapter 1. Verse 3 of chapter 1. So verse 3 uh, of chapter uh, 1 says like this. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed the things which are written in it, for the time is near. So we have been discussing from chapter 1, verses 1 to 1 and 2. But now we are going to the verse 3. Uh, the heading you can give like this, threefold blessings. Threefold blessings. Okay. Threefold blessings, you know, in that particular verse, you can see mainly three blessings are there. Three group of people are blessed by God. Which are those group? The first group is the readers. The first group is readers. Okay, so the reader mentioned here is not the private reader, uh, but the man who publicly reads the at the presence uh, of the congregation. You know, reading the word of God, reading the scripture uh, was an important service in the Jewish worship that we can, uh, I mean, uh, we can see from uh, different, uh, I mean, uh, other references also. So always reading the scripture, uh, I mean, among the congregation was an important service in the Jewish worship. You know, when we go to Luke chapter uh, 4, uh, verses uh, 16 and 17, Luke chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. So actually you are writing, uh, uh, you are writing down all these points. So that's the reason that I am trying to read the verses. Okay. So uh, it will be easy for you to write it down. And I'll be trying to read the portion sometimes. And I'll ask to ask you to read also. So uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 16 and 17 uh, says like this. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him and he opened the book and found the place where it was written. That means here we understand it was a, it was a common practice whenever they were gathering together in the synagogue and they had to read the scripture. So here, uh, maybe John is speaking about that reading, the publicly reading, you know, uh, reading the Bible, reading the scripture publicly is, is very, very important. And, you know, when you read the, read the scripture publicly, understand that you are, a, you are a blessed person. You are a blessed person. So getting, if you're getting a chance to read the Bible, if you're getting a chance to uh, share something from the word and remember that you are a blessed person. You are a blessed person. Okay. So here the readers are blessed. It says that the readers are blessed. That means the reader is the, it's not a, it's not a private reader. That means, okay, you can, you can have the private reading uh, uh, session also, private reading uh, per, in your personal life. You can read the Bible. There is no problem. But I mean, here it mentions about the public readers. I mean, who is reading uh, uh, in the midst of other, in the presence of the congregation. So that's what we understand from that. So there is a blessing in reading the scripture. So whenever you are getting a chance to read the Bible or read the scripture publicly, do it very uh, happily because you are going to be blessed by God. And the second group of people is hearers. The second group is hearers. That also is in the same verse 
of uh, chapter 1 verse 3 blessed is you he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy hearers listen so it's a privilege for us to hear and read the word of god okay reading is a blessing and reading is a privilege and also hearing also is a privilege you know it is it, it is uh, uh, the, the word of god is available always the word of god is available always so we are the blessed people to listen the scripture every day in our life you know there are many people in different uh, different countries like uh, uh, saudi arabia and other i mean communist i mean uh, 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 nations and all uh, those people they don't have a chance to get a bible or they don't have a chance to read the bible and you they don't have a, a chance to uh, publicly hold the bible but we got a privilege and we got a chance to read the bible and listen the bible and i mean uh, uh, carry it i mean it, it publicly there is no problem at all so we are we are the privileged people to read the bible and to have the bible and it is available always and even you people are so blessed by god because you have many 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 chances to he hear the word of god you know uh, i've been uh, thinking about uh, the, the the social media today mm -hmm. you know uh, when i was thinking about that morning this morning uh, i was uh, i mean uh, taking a bible study for the for the uh, for one of the churches in, in in kerala so when i was taking the classes for the for the kerala church i was i mean saying that uh, this is a privilege for every one of us you know uh, before we don't have we, we didn't have that uh, uh, availability of the word of god we, maybe we had maybe uh, uh, one two or three uh, meetings uh, in a week but now what happens every every day there are many messages coming in the social media and uh, there are many messages are i mean broadcasted in the online and it is very easy to receive the word of god so we have a chance and we have a uh, uh, opportunity to uh, listen the word of god so we people are so blessed by god but listen one thing the people those who are listening or reading or hearing the word of god have to give more accountability to <clears throat> god because we are supposed to obey the word of god whatever we hear and whatever we read i mean so that is the that is the blessing the second blessing goes to the hearers okay and the third blessing is for the doers for the doers third blessing that is also in the same verse and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed the things which are written in it for the time is near and and John is writing like this, the doers of the Bible, doers of the scriptures are blessed by God. That means the person who is obeying the word of God, the person who is obeying the word of God is more blessed, is more blessed. There are many people, they are so interested in reading and hearing, amen, but remember, there are many people they are not able or they are not ready to obey the word of god i mean i don't know how many of you are reading uh, the bible personally in your life you know every day every day i mean you have to read every day the bible we should take it as a practice in our life you know uh, we have to read the bible every day and we have to meditate the bible every day then only uh, that will become as a, as a spiritual food for the for the christian people because I mean, we are always having the uh, physical food every day, maybe two times or three times or four times. But uh, let me just uh, let me just remind you that if you are not eating or if you are not getting the spiritual food in your life, there won't be any 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 spiritual growth in your Christian life. So we are blessed people, uh, and if we are reading the Bible, if you are hearing the Bible, and if you are doing and obeying, uh, I mean, uh, keeping the commandment of God you are more blessed by god that is the meaning of the verse three now we will come to the next portion you know uh, it, it, when we talk about the blessedness uh, or, or when we when we talk about the blessing of the people of god i would like to give you one one heading like this seven blessedness in the book of revelation seven blessedness in the book of 
revelation. Here in the verse three, we were talking about uh, about three blessings upon three group of people. At the same time, when we go through the book of Revelation, the total, the book of Revelation, uh, there are many references. Especially, there are seven references which I can give you that uh, speaks about the blessedness in the book of Revelation. Seven blessedness in the book of Revelation. Number one. Number one. The blessedness of reading, hearing, and obeying the word of God. Actually, we have already discussed about that just before. The first blessedness is the blessedness of reading, hearing, and obeying the word of God. That is Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. The second blessedness of a person, or in the in the which is which we can see in the book of Revelation, is in uh, 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 Revelation chapter fourteen, verse thirteen. Revelation chapter fourteen, verse thirteen. That is, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, "Write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on." Yes, says the Spirit, so that. They may rest from their labors for their deeds follow with them. So the second blessedness which is written in the book of Revelation is the blessedness of the dead in Christ. That means the blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Okay, that means if a person is living in the Lord or if person have accepted Jesus as his personal savior in his life, that person is living in the Lord. That person is living in the Lord. At the same time, when that person is dying, that person will be dying in the Lord, living in the Lord and dying in the Lord. For them, there is a great blessing ahead. And that is a blessed occasion that if a person is dying in the Lord, that means if a person is, when a person is dying, if he is having the faith in God, if he's, I mean, uh, accepted Jesus as a personal savior, and if he is leading a holy life and uh, uh, obeying the word of God, then that person is dying in the Lord, in the Lord. So that is a blessedness. And third blessedness is the blessedness of the watchful pilgrim, the blessedness of the watchful pilgrim. That is in Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. It says like this, Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and keeps his claws so that he will not walk about naked and men will not see his shape. It says about blessed is he who is awake and keeping his garments. You know, the people, those who have, have the God and those who are, I mean, obeying the word of God, those people will be always awake. Those people will be always awake because they know that the second coming of Jesus Christ may happen at any time. We do not know when it is going to happen. But we know one thing, that the second coming of Jesus Christ is going to happen very soon. Very soon, at any time. Maybe this night. Maybe next hour. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe after two days. Maybe after one year. Whatever it may be. We should be ready for that. And we should be awake always spiritually to receive Jesus Christ. And also those people will be keeping their garments holy, holy and harmless, blameless. Amen. So every person, those who accepted Jesus as a personal savior, that person is having a garment, the garment of righteousness, the garment of righteousness. We, when God was creating us, when God was creating us, God 
have God had given us the the the, the, the clothing or the garment. What was the garment? It is the garment of glory. It is the garment of glory. So God gave us the garment of glory, but because of the sin of the man, that garment they lost that garment, and it says that they became they became they became naked. You know, when God was coming down to the Garden of Eden, these people could understand that they were naked and they were just trying to hide themselves among the among the trees. Okay, so that that is what we read in the I mean uh, Genesis chapter uh, one, two, and three. Okay, now we have to understand one thing: if we if you are a blessed person, then always will be we will be watchful. We will be watchful and always just like uh, that uh, i mean 10 uh, virgins okay five virgins were very ready and they were prepared enough to i mean uh, uh, to 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 see the 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 i mean a uh, bride oh, no. okay so then blessed is the who he is who is awake and also who is keeping his garments in a in a in a in a, in a way that it is it is it is holy and uh, a proper uh, in the sight of god no we will come to the fourth, uh, fourth. Uh, I mean, uh, blessedness. That is the blessedness of the of the uh, invited guest of God. The blessedness of the invited guest of God. The blessedness of the invited guest of God. That is in chapter. 19 verse 9 revelation chapter 19 verse 9 it says like this then he said to me right blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb and he said to me these are true words of god the so blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb that means Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. There will be a, a, a wedding of the of the Lamb of God, that is Jesus, and with the the the, the, the bride, uh, which is uh, which is uh, the uh, um, uh, church, the New Testament church. So the people, those who are invited for that wedding, is blessed. That is the meaning of that one for the for the wedding of the. The bride and the bridegroom, okay, Jesus and the New Testament Church. So that is the blessing, the, the blessedness of a people of God. And the fifth one is the blessedness of people whom uh, uh, whom death cannot touch. The fifth blessedness is blessedness of the people whom death cannot touch. That is in the twentieth. Chapter, verse 6. It says like this. Blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. So, blessed so the blessedness of the people whom death cannot touch. There is a group of people, they, the, 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 the death cannot touch them. So those people are blessed. Blessed is he who shares in the first resurrection. That is in uh, uh, chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed is he who shares in the first resurrection. That means the martyrs for Christ. The martyrs. For Christ, no, uh, that is the, the second death is the lake of fire also. So the, the second death which is written here, okay. So the second death which is the lake of fire in the at the end of the end end time, you know, uh, there will be a lake of fire and uh, Satan and his uh, uh, and his uh, I mean followers will be I mean uh, 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 will be thrown into the lake of fire. So that is the second death. And now. Uh, the, the 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 people those who uh, uh, that uh, uh, the death cannot touch they are the martyrs for Christ. There are many people already 
uh, uh, I mean, uh, bear the bear the martyrdom of Jesus Christ and uh, those who uh, died for the name of the Lord. So those people, okay, we can call them as a as the people uh, those that the death cannot touch them now. So already they died. I mean, in in faith they already died in believing in Jesus Christ and they died. And again, the death cannot touch them. That is the meaning of that point. And the fifth, I mean, sixth blessedness in, is in, in, the, in the last chapter, uh, chapter 22, verse 7. Chapter 22, verse 7. So that is, that is, oh, sorry, the sixth one is uh, in, uh, uh, yeah, 22, verse 7. That is, blessedness of those who obey the word. Blessedness of those who obey the word. It says like this, and behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. Again, the same verse we have read in the in the chapter one, verse three also. And again, in the last chapter, uh, John is I mean reminding once again that blessedness of those who obey the word. Amen. So blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. You know, this is a precious book, especially the book of Revelation. It's a precious book. And the people, those who are studying that, the people, those who are obeying the word of God, words of the prophecy is very important. And they are also blessed and blessedness of the those who obey the word of God. And the last blessedness, which is mentioned in the book of Revelation is the seventh one. That is the blessedness of whose robes are washed. The blessedness of whose robes are washed. That is in chapter 22, verse 14. Chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. So uh, we will be uh, uh, going through all these portions later also because this is just to remind you the things and we'll be uh, discussing more about all those things in the, in the upcoming uh, chapters. So we are in the chapter one, chapter one. And I was just, I mean, giving the, the total idea about, I mean, wherever uh, there are references about the blessedness of the people of God. Okay, so there are seven points regarding the blessedness in the book of Revelation. Now, we will be coming to the next heading and we will explain all those things and uh, I'll be giving a few minutes for you to, I mean, uh, ask any question or doubt or something, if you have anything. You can ask that one and we'll be discussing on that also. Now we will go to the next heading that is the source of the grace and peace. The source of the grace and peace. That is from chapter 1 verses 4 through 8. Chapter 1 verses 4 through 8. <clears throat> Okay, any, any one of you can read that portion very, very clearly from chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. One person can read, one person can unmute yourself and you can read that portion. Then we will go through that uh, verses. Sean, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So here in the in the verse four, you know, uh, he speaks about the grace and peace is coming from somewhere. 
the grace and peace is coming from somewhere. So John is writing uh, this letter and especially these letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor. So John is saying that there is a peace and grace coming from some areas, some areas, mainly there are four areas from the peace and grace is coming. So he is just talking about the, the areas from which the, the peace and grace is coming. For example, uh, uh, it is coming from John, you know, it says in fourth verse, uh, I John, okay, I John to the seven churches, I John to the seven churches. Okay, so that is coming from John. The first area is the John. Then secondly, it is from Jesus. It is from Jesus. Okay, it is from Jesus. I told you four areas there, there that, okay, I, I'll be explaining all those things later. Now, just I'm just giving you a, 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 a clear idea about that. You know, there are four areas that John is mentioning that the peace and grace is coming. Okay, the first one is, John says, it is coming from me. It is coming from me. My peace and grace to you. Then secondly, the peace and grace is coming from Jesus, from Jesus. Okay, you know what is the speciality of the peace coming from Jesus? Can anyone say what is the speciality of the peace coming from Jesus? It is everlasting. It is everlasting. It is satisfying. Yes. Anything else? So can you can you remind me when Jesus said something about peace? That I give my peace unto you. I give my peace unto you. The peace is not of this world, but the eternal peace. The peace is not of this world, but the eternal peace. You know, when did Jesus say that what was the occasion that jesus was saying i am giving my peace unto you the peace is not from the world but it is the eternal peace what is the occasion when he resurrected no it was not yeah. when he healed someone Okay, I, I, I'll give you the answer. You know, it was not after the resurrection, but it was before the resurrection. That means just before the crucifixion. Just before the crucifixion. See, it's, it's, it's amazing that, you know, Jesus was saying just before the crucifixion, saying that I have the peace and I am giving the peace to you. That is not from the world, but it is the eternal peace from God. So, how can a person say to the people that I am giving my peace unto you just before the crucifixion. Because Jesus was knowing that he is going to be crucified. Even knowing, even though he was knowing that about his crucifixion, that his crucifixion is going to happen within few hours. But even then he is saying that I am filled with happiness. I am filled with peace of God. I have the peace in me. And I'm ready to give the peace to you because I don't have anything to give to you, but I'm giving you the peace. Do not, do not be anxious about anything. I'm giving my peace unto you. And this, this evening, let me tell you one thing as a message that whatever it may be, the, the, the struggles that you are facing, whatever it may be, the problem that you're going through, whatever, I mean, I mean a tough situation that you are going through, no worries, no worries. I mean, God's presence is with us and the peace of God is always with us. And Jesus says that I am giving my peace unto you even just before the crucifixion of Jesus. I mean, let us receive that peace from the Lord. So that's the reason John is trying to, to give them the peace from Jesus. Give, giving the peace from Jesus, that which was Jesus was giving to the disciples just before the crucifixion and the, 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 the third and area the third area from where the, the, the cruci from where the peace and grace is coming is the seven spirits of the throne of Jesus seven, seven spirits of the throne of Jesus it is there it's there we'll be coming to coming to that point okay so I'm just I mean giving you the, the idea about that 
the seven spirits of the throne of Jesus and from Almighty God. The fourth area is the, the, the Almighty God. Okay, so we'll be going into that portion. Now we'll be just entering and discussing about all those things. Listen, now the first one, the first thing that the first uh, a thing that from birth the, the peace and grace is coming. Okay. Uh, totally, I told you four areas are there. Number one, John the Apostle, then Jesus and seven spirit uh, uh, at the at the throne of the Jesus, and then the Almighty God. Four areas mainly there. Okay, but there are seven. Uh, sorry, uh, it is not seven. Maybe uh, ten or eleven. Uh, uh, eleven. I mean, uh, uh, places that is uh, mentioned there. Uh, from where the, the, the peace and the grace is coming uh, for the people I mean, of God. Number one, number one, from John the Apostle, from John the Apostle, from John the Apostle. That is in chapter one, verse four. That is in chapter one, verse four. It says like this, I, John, to the seven churches, that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. Okay, so what kind of peace is in John also now? We have been thinking about what kind of peace was there in Jesus. Now I'm asking my question is, what kind of peace that John was having while he is in Patmos? It's a, it's a heartbreaking question that comes to us this evening. You know, Apostle John, he is alone in Patmos. He is alone in Patmos. He is banished to Patmos because of the word of God, because of the word of God, because he was spreading the gospel. I mean, because of the persecution towards the Christianity. I mean, uh, the, the, the Apostle John was banished to the island of Patmos. And now there is no expectation to come back. He doesn't have any expectation that I'm going to go back to that place of those churches which I planted and uh, those churches which I ministered already and I'll be going back. No, no. There is no expectation. He cannot expect anything because he is banished to the island of Patmos. There is nobody to help him. There is nobody to help him. Okay, he don't know what is going to happen in the next day. He do not know what is going to happen in the next day. But still, he is filled with the peace of Jesus Christ. He is filled with the peace of Jesus Christ. And he's alone, he, he's alone there. There is nobody to help him. There is no, nobody to support him. There is nobody to, nobody to encourage him. Being as alone in that situation, in the island, that person is writing to the seven churches that I'm giving my peace also to you because I am filled with the peace of God. I am filled with the peace of God. Hallelujah. The person who is, I mean, I mean, learned and who is trained himself to go through all the situations can say to the people, those who are in trouble, that you can receive the peace from me. And I'm giving my peace also to you because I'm, 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 I'm able to comfort you. I have some encouraging words to you. I have some comforting words to you to share with you that you will receive the peace of God. I have the peace of God and I'm sharing. I'm ready to share the peace of God towards you. That's the same thing is happening with John also. John was ready to share the peace in him to the people of God in, in the in the in the church seven churches in the Asia Minor. So that's the reason that the, the peace and grace is coming from firstly coming from John the Apostle and secondly secondly the second uh, uh, second area also is written in chapter one verse four chapter one verse four it says like this John to the seven churches I John to the seven churches that are in Asia grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. Who is and who was and who is to come. 
Okay. So the second second area from where the peace and grace is coming, that is from Christ, who is and who was and who is to come, who is to come. Chapter 1 verse 4. What does it mean that who is? Okay, Christ who is, who was, and who is to come. Who is, who was, and who is to come. What is the clear meaning of that portion? And why John is writing in this special meaning, a special, I mean, a manner that God, Jesus Christ, is now and he was and he is to come. This is the eternal, the, you can call it as the eterni uh, eternality of God. This is the eternality of God. Okay. They uh, were Okay, so it is the it is the eternality of God, and also it is the Trinity of Godhead. The Trinity of Godhead. What is the Trinity of Godhead? Uh, what, who, who are who are the three persons in one God? Uh, the Father, Son. Son, and the Holy the Spirit. Spirit. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Father has a work, and Son has a work. And the Holy Spirit also has the work to do. So they were doing everything together at the same time in different times. Whenever the need comes, that time somebody will do something and all together it's a Godhead. It's a Godhead, Trinity. And God is not limited to a particular time or a space. God is, God was, and God is to come. Christ is, Christ was, and Christ is to come means means there is no limiter. It, there, it, it, that means God is not at all limited to a particular time or a space. Particular time or a space. That means we cannot say that, okay, okay, God was living in this time only. Or now God is living and Jesus was living maybe uh, 2000 years ago, but Jesus died. There is no Jesus now. We cannot say that. That means God, we cannot say that God is not limited to a particular time or space because in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, we will read that verse, then we will move on. <clears throat> 3 14 says like this, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Okay. So to Moses, the almighty God speaks to him that I am who I am. That means the Jewish rabbis he explained that by saying that God meant I was and I still am and I in the future also I'll be there. Okay. For the Jewish people and Jewish rabbis, they were teaching the people, the, the, uh, the people of Israel, that when God said to Moses that I am who I am, I am who I am, that means, you know, Moses was asking God, oh God, what is your name? What is your name? If the, if the people in Egypt and if the, if the uh, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt is asking a question that who is your God? What is the name of your God? Then God said, this is the answer. This is the answer. You have to give them the answer that I am who I am. That means they were meaning that I was and I still am and I, and in the future also I will be there. And even, you know, Paul, Paul in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, uh, 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 Paul says like this, that you know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when you think about all these things, when God says something to Moses that I am, that I am, and uh, uh, when you think about uh, uh, Apostle Paul says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay. These all things speaks about the eternity past and eternity present and the eternity future. That is little difficult for 
you to understand. But I mean, I'm not. I mean, going to elaborately say all say all those things. But we will just think about something about what is the meaning of the uh, eternity past and the eternity present and the eternity future. Okay, that means God was before the existence of all things. God was there before the existence of all the things. And God is there everywhere at present. God is there everywhere at present. And God will be after all these things. God will be there after all these things. I think you got the meaning of that eternity past, eternity present, and eternity future. Okay, so we understand that. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, it says that in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. That's true. At the same time, you know, even before that, even before that, even before creating heavens and the earth, who was there? God was there. God was there. God was there. So that is called the eternity past. Eternity past. So we do not know when is the birth of God. There is no birth of God. God was there. That's all we can understand. That is called the eternity past. Then we read about God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the eternity present means the time that we are living now. Okay, the eternity present that we are just moving into the eternity. Now we are in this current situation and we are just moving forward to the eternity. And the eternity future means there is an eternity, it is coming, it is coming forward. So we will be there, the people of God, the children of God, the believers of God will be there in the eternity future also. And now we are here with God. And now, I mean, in, in future, we also will be there in the eternity future. Okay, so God was before the existence of all these things. We know that there are many things in this universe. God was there even before the existence of all these things because God only created, God only created, God only formed even the heavens and the earth and the all the I mean creatures in the sea and all the creatures in the in the sky and all the all the human being. So God was there and God is here presented, and now God will be there in after all these things, even if all these things passed away, God will be there. And the word of God also will be there in the future. So without the intervention of God, nothing happens in the universe. Without the intervention of God, nothing happens in the universe. I think you got the meaning of Christ who is and Christ who was and Christ who is to come. Praise God. And that is in the verse 4 of chapter 1. Now, we will come to the third area from where the, 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 the peace and the grace is coming. That is in the same verse that is 4. Verse 4. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. This is a confusing confusing verse or usage. Okay, so the third area is from the seven spirits who were before his throne. His throne means the throne of Jesus Christ. The seven spirits. Okay, so these seven spirits are mentioned more than once in the book of Revelation. In, in, I think, uh, including this, there are uh, uh, four references, uh, I mean, where uh, uh, the spirits, the, the, uh, I mean, which, uh, I mean, uh, are recorded about the, about the, I mean, uh, seven spirits, seven spirits, which, which is, I mean, before his throne, before the throne of Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, uh, that is uh, uh, chapter, this one is the one, the first verse, chapter one, verse three, uh, chapter one, verse uh, four. Then, now, uh, Revelation chapter 3 verse 1 it says like this to the angel of the church 
in service, right? He who have uh, has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Okay, so that is another one. And Revelation chapter four verse five. That is, uh, out from the throne comes flashes or lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. No. Chapter 5, verse 6. And I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and the elders a lamp standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven ears, eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Okay. So listen. So these are the four references which speaks about the seven spirits which is standing in front of the throne of Jesus Christ. Okay, so from the history we can understand when we study about the history of the people of Israel or the Jewish people, they always believe that there are seven angels in the presence of God. There are seven angels in the presence of God. They believe. We don't believe and we don't have any evidence to, 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 to prove that. But the people of Israel, the Jewish people, they were always believing that they were, there were seven angels in the presence of God always. And they believe that these angels also stands uh, and uh, enters uh, before the glory of the Lord always. Okay? They had a, uh, only, for, only for the seven angels had the access to uh, God, to the presence of God. They were, they were believing, the Jewish people were believing. And the names of those uh, angels, uh, it is not, uh, the, the names of the uh, angels are not familiar with us, so I have uh, written there and it, it will be there in the slide. You can just write it down. The names of uh, seven uh, angels that those people were believing that uh, these angels were always there. The first one is Uriel, Uriel. And the second one is Raphael, Raphael. The third one is Ragwell. Ragwell. Fourth one is Michael. Fourth one is Michael. <clears throat> Fifth one is Gabriel. Fifth one is Gabriel. Sixth one is Cycle, cycle. And the seventh one is Jeremiel, Jeremiel. I'm showing that because uh, the, the uh, alphabets or letters are a little different. So I was just giving that one. So you can write it down. So. This is the belief of uh, the, the people of Israel, maybe Jewish people, that they were believing that, that uh, and, uh, there were seven angels always, I mean, standing around uh, God, and uh, those angels are known as these names. So they believed that these angels take care of something, the different elements of this world. Okay, they were believing that these angels, these seven angels were having, they were taking care of some of the elements of the world, like fire. Okay, the angel of fire, the angel of air, the angel of water, and uh, the angel of uh, uh, angel of uh, as, as a guardian for the nation. Which are those? The elements like fire, the angel of fire. You can call it as an angel of air, an angel of water, and some angels were known as the guardian angels of the nations. And some, th some of the people think that they are the seven spirits mentioned here in the, uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 4. Okay, there is a view and th this, is the, this is one of the opinion that some of the people are believing that these angels are mentioned in Revelation chapter 1 verse 4. It says that there is seven spirits mentioned there, seven spirits in the, in the presence of the uh, throne of Jesus Christ. But let me tell you, absolutely that is not acceptable. That is not acceptable. 
So now John is not at all talking about those angels that named angels. He is not talking about those angels. Absolutely, we cannot we cannot accept that view. But we are going to look into the Word of God. What is the what is the meaning of the seven spirits mentioned in chapter one verse four? Now let us see what are the seven spirits who are before the throne of God. The throne of God. For that, we will have to go to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2 says, The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and the spirit of strength, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So listen. So here, here is the seven aspects of the same spirit. The spirit is one. Spirit is same. But at the same time, there are seven aspects of the same spirit. Seven aspects of the same spirit. Which are those? Which are those? Seven, seven aspects you can see there. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of strength, the spirit of strength, the spirit of, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of knowledge. And the spirit of fear of God. The spirit of fear of God. So listen, you know, we cannot think about, you know, uh, the, the meaning of the seven spirit is uh, the angel, those who are standing in, in front of God, uh, just like uh, uh, the people of uh, people of Israel or Jewish people believe, but we come to when we come to this portion, we understand there are mainly recorded that from the presence of God, from the presence of God, there there are something is coming or seven aspects of the spirit is coming. Okay, we should have the spirit. We should have these kinds of spirit in us, as as a believer, as a Christian, we should have the spirit of the Lord and we should have the spirit of wisdom. And spirit of understanding, and the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of strength, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of fear of God. You know, these all things are coming from God. These all things are coming from God. But a great privilege that God has given us to accept all these kinds of spirits in us. Amen. We read about only one spirit, that is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit is good. We have the Holy Spirit and we speak in tongues and we prophesy and we do all the spiritual activities with the help of the Holy Spirit. At the same time, we should have all these qualities and we should have all these I mean, aspects of the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom, Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and Spirit of strength and the Spirit of knowledge and the Spirit of fear of God. I mean, so may God bless you all to have all kind, all, all these kinds of, I mean, spirit in us, and this is coming from the God and Jesus Christ, and that is the grace and peace is coming from that area. So John is speaking about, and that peace and that grace is coming to you people, those who are in persecution, you people, those who are going through the troubles in your life. Amen. So one more point we will. I discuss the fourth one also we'll be discussing then we will we will uh, uh, spend maybe five minutes for the discussion or something or question or something then we will pray and close i mean the fourth point is the fourth place or fourth area is i mean from jesus the faithful witness yeah the faithful witness from jesus the faithful witness that is in chapter one verse five chapter one verse five from Jesus, 
the faithful witness. I'll read that verse. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of earth, to him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood. So the fourth area from where the peace and grace is coming is from Jesus, the faithful witness. So a witness is essentially a person who speaks from first-hand knowledge. Okay? So when we when we think about a witness, that, that, that witness is always essentially a person who speaks about the first-hand knowledge. Okay? That is why Jesus is God's witness. So Jesus is the person who received the truth from God. Jesus is the first hand, okay, Jesus is the person who, who received the first hand knowledge from God. No one else. Even the angels did not understand that. The, even, even the angels could not, I mean, know that. But Jesus, when he was, I mean, coming down to the earth, I mean, Jesus received the first hand knowledge about God and the truth. So, he, he is, I mean, uniquely the person with the first-hand knowledge about God. That is what we read in John chapter 18, uh, verse 37. John chapter 18, verse 37. Uh, 18, verse uh, 37, I'll read it for you. It is like this, therefore, Pilate said to him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. To testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So what is the meaning of that? Jesus is the faithful witness of the truth of God the Father. I mean, so so the, 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 the peace and the grace is coming from? Jesus, the faithful witness. Jesus was faithful to God in all the ways. Jesus was faithful. He was. I mean, he he came to this earth. He obeyed the uh, obeyed the, the will of God, Father. And when he was in this earth, he did everything according to the will of Father. And he died. Uh, he died for the for the sinners according to the according to the will of Father. And he did everything. And he was the witness. He was the witness, the, the clear witness and faithful witness among the people of God. So that's what we understand. And there are many, many points more. And we'll be uh, discussing all those points in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the coming, upcoming classes. Okay. So if anybody is having any, any, any doubt or question, if you have time, then we will explain all those things. Otherwise, uh, ask the question and I'll give the answer maybe next class. So the seven spirit and Holy Spirit is different. Yeah, seven spirit and Holy Spirit. Yeah, I, I told you, you know the the, the the spirit is same. The spirit is same, but from that spirit, the aspects are different. The aspects yes. are different. okay. The spirit is same. Okay, Holy Spirit itself, but from there, the the aspects of the spirits are different. Esther, anywhere in the Bible does it give these names? Uriel, Raphael, Raigel, Michael. No, 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 no. That is that is from uh, uh, some of the books from the uh, from the I mean, uh, you know, the, the people of the Jewish people. They have some of the books and the, the, the historical things. And from it, from there only they are. Taken. Where did they get it from? They it, it is history, you know. You know they were there uh, even even uh, in the, from the beginning. But they had many things uh, uh, written and oral uh, uh, things are there, oral uh, writings are there. So they are just believing. Many other things are believing, you know. They believe that the angels are uh, uh, more close to God, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's the reason that, that, you know, when we were studying about the book Hebrew. of Hebrews, yeah, mm -hmm. book of Hebrews, and, you know, they were believing, they were giving more importance for angels uh and all those things many there are many things so they were knowing that idea that these may be the seven angels. but they also worship the same god right 
they also worship the same god at the same time their rules and their relations and their uh, uh, system is different their system is different at the same time we people or the christian people or the new testament people we have a different system of worship okay different system of worship but uh, all of their beliefs are not right they were believing in different way at the same time it is not okay it is not written by moses or somebody no you have to think about that also. it's not there in torah no no yeah, it is not in torah so sometimes you know there are many man made uh, man made uh, 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 things are there you know? those people will uh, make some uh, some kind of laws or something or better teachings or something and some people will be believing that even in the days of jesus christ also there were many many group of people among mm -hmm. the jewish people among the jewish people there were many many groups pharisees and uh, sadducees and like scribes and yeah those, those all those people were not having the same belief they were having different different varieties of beliefs in their thems, themselves like yeah. today how we have martoma yakova catholic like different yeah. beliefs yeah. Even though all are Christians. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Also, one question uh, from Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, when you mentioned the seventh spirit, you know, and, and the first spirit is the spirit of the Lord, uh, and, this, and, and the spirit of uh, wisdom and understanding. But I understand by reading the scripture, the spirit of the Lord and rest is the attributes of that spirit of the Lord. That is, the spirit of the Lord will rest on you, which consists of wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, and fear. So if you look at it, it's only six attributes, not seven. When the fear of the Lord come upon you, you will have the wisdom, you will have the understanding, you will have the counsel, the strength, the knowledge, and fear. So it's only six, six spirits, not seven spirits. One spirit of the Lord will contain these attributes. That's what I understand from that. Yeah. It seems like that actually uh, uh, in, in writing in that, uh, that place, you know, we have to think something uh, differently like uh, uh, it is uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 11 verse, uh, I mean 2, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2. You know, uh, it starts like this spirit of the Lord will rest on you, the spirit of wisdom. Okay, uh, uh, it, is, it is correct, whatever you said it is correct, but at the same time the spirit of the Lord is there. But Seven aspects are there, so in that we can include the spirit of the Lord also. The spirit of the Lord, I mean, uh, there are many, maybe not only seven, but there are many aspects also. But even uh, here it is written in uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 4 uh, uh, about uh, the, the, the seven things. At the same time, uh, when we were just referring to Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 also, we can say that, okay, the spirit of the Lord. Okay, the spirit of the Lord is the first one, maybe, yeah, even when we count it is the six only but we can take it as the spirit of the lord is there and from there the the, the other aspects are uh, uh, different so that's the reason uh, we can take in that way also there is no there is no uh, um, wrong in saying that only six are there or seven are there is no no meaning in the in the number So, uh, Pastor, are these actually like attributes or are they the, what we call as the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit? Uh, you, can, you can connect with that also. The gifts of the Holy Spirit is, it is actually, it is not, it is different. You know, the gift of the Holy Spirit is different and uh, the, uh, the, 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 the aspects of the Spirit is different in, in a side. Okay. The gift of the Holy Spirit is, uh, uh, how can we connect that the gifts of the Spirit uh, with uh, these or these points? So the, uh, so the seven gifts are like uh, wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. Hmm. So it's almost similar uh, to the seven spirits that we discussed today. Yes, yeah, seven spirits are there, but uh, it is not equal. It is not equal. A uh, bit difference is there, you know, sometimes. Uh, um, it is uh, almost different, but uh, um, you know, the spirit of the Lord, spirit of wisdom, understanding. Yeah, wisdom, the spirit is like love, joy, peace. Those are the different spirits. Even you know, yeah, the love, joy, peace, and the 
uh, uh, joy in the Holy Spirit and all those things, you know. Uh, that is there, but at the same time, it also coming from this side. Okay, so when we have the, the uh, what is the, the, the spirit of wisdom, then only we will, we can connect that one to this, but it is not equal. It is not equal. The spirit of the Lord, spirit of wisdom, when we have, then only we will be loving the people and the love of God at the same time. The understanding also will be there. Understanding, when, when there is understanding, there is joy, peace, and holiness in the in the Holy Spirit or righteousness and all, all those things. Yeah, I think gift of the Spirit would mean, uh, you know, the, the, fruits of, the fruits of the Spirit. That is the fruit of the Spirit. And Love, the joy, of, peace, long-suffering, kindness. The result yeah. of God within you. If you have the wisdom of God, then you'll produce the fruits of the Spirit that is love, joy, peace, and patience. And right. But the gift of Holy Spirit is different. That's true. Yes. That's what I said. When we have these seven or seven or six aspects in our life from the Spirit, then we will be doing or we will be having the fruit of the Spirit. In that way only we can connect that. So when we have the aspects of the Spirit, then only we will be having uh, we will be having the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit. That is fruit. And uh, Pastor, like uh, about about the blessedness that we uh, discussed today. Yes. So, are these also related to the beatitudes? Attributes? No, the blessedness that we discussed today. Are yeah. these related to the beatitudes? Um, I didn't get your uh, question. So, the the beatitudes that are uh, mentioned in uh, Matthew and Luke. So, uh, we talk about the eight, eight or nine beatitudes. And uh, are these uh, blessedness related to the to those beatitudes mentioned in Matthew? No, 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 no. This is this is entirely different. You know, uh, these things uh, uh, you can you can uh, connect with uh, uh, the the other things like you know uh, uh, the the Christian life. The first, uh, I mean, two uh, three things are with uh, connected with the, the Christian life, and the and the last, uh, I mean, portions are uh, regarding uh, uh, something which is happening after the. Uh, return of Jesus Christ after the second coming of Jesus Christ. So, so the the Mary suffer and all those things and uh, maybe uh, the death. Okay, and the and uh, some other things. You know, the robes are washed. When okay, that is different. You know, when uh, when our robes are washed only, we will be having the access to the tree of life. Okay, so that is different. But I, I don't think that okay, there is a there is a, a connection with the, those the, those things with the, this blessedness. But Pastor, this uh, this blessedness is mentioned throughout the Bible, not just in Revelation. For example, blessed are blessedness of reading and hearing and obeying. Yeah. Is there Psalms one, right? Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel yeah. of the wicked, or who meditates on the law of the Lord. And if you go through Psalms, there's so many verse, verses that starts with blessed is the man, blessed is the man, blessed is the man. So throughout the scripture, blessings all be there. But I think you were mentioning is blessedness from Revelation specifically. Only from only from book of Revelation. Which, which you will read about and study about it, it's throughout the Bible too. Mm. So the reason that I took only from the book of Revelation is because we are now, we are studying only book of Revelation. So that's the reason I took that source. So there are many, many other references which speaks about even in the Psalm source. Yeah. So we are focusing only on the book of Revelation. So we are just trying to understand all those things. Anything else? So shall we pray? So we'll discuss, no problem, we'll discuss next class also. So get ready for, uh, read that chapter, read that whole chapter and uh, chapter one, and we will discuss maybe in the next class also. God bless you now, uh, Jason, brother, we'll, we'll pray and uh, conclude the, I mean, the Bible study. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Gracious and most loving Heavenly Father, we thank Amen. and praise you for this time that you've given us to come together and study your word. Father Lord, your word, you have revealed it to us. And Father Lord, we know these things because you have given the word to your prophets, to your apostles, to your teachers, your preachers, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for giving the word to our pastor that he was able to Father Lord, teach us from the book of Revelation, Lord. Father Lord, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, 
or sit in the seat of mockers for doesn't walk in the but but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Father Lord, help us, O Lord, that we may delight in your law. Father Lord, understand, read the Bible on a daily basis, and Father Lord, delight in it, O Lord, and that we may live obedient life, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed word that we heard, O Lord. Help us to be called the blessed people of God. Father Lord, hearing and doing is where blessedness is, O Lord. Many times we just hear it and we never do it. We never do anything that we hear, O Lord. So, Father Lord, forgive us of our sins, O Lord. And many times we have heard the scriptures. We know the scriptures, O Lord. But many times we have not, we have not uh, uh, done the things that the scripture tells us to do, O Lord. So, forgive us, O Lord. And help us, O Lord, to increase our faith in you, O Lord. As we read the book of Revelation, help us to grow in faith, O Lord. Help us to grow in, in holiness, O Lord. Father Lord, you are God and you are a holy God. And you demand holiness from your people, O Lord. Hallelujah. Your, your word says, be holy for I am holy, O Lord. So help us, O Lord, as we study the book of Revelation, that we may be blessed people who live holy and righteous life, O Lord. Hallelujah. Father Lord, forgive us of the sins that we have committed in our past, O Lord. Father Lord, you are the God who forgives, O Lord. And Father Lord, the grace and peace that comes upon your people, Lord, who you have forgiven, O Lord. Father Lord, then... When you forgive us of our sins, we truly will have peace with God. Hallelujah. But Father, we thank you, Lord, for the for the peace that surpasses so all human understandings with us, O Lord, and God and our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, O Lord. Father, Lord, for thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for, for giving us all that we need in life and God us to live in this world, O Lord. Father, help us, O Lord, that we may live righteous lives, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this for this word that we heard, O Lord. Help us to live by it daily, O Lord. And we bless the people of God. Father, we pray for Pastor, give him wisdom, O Lord, who continues to teach us from the book of Revelation, O Lord. Reveal the word of God to him, O Lord, so that he may speak the word of God to us and help us to hear what the Spirit has to speak to the church, O Lord. Help us to hear, O Lord, what your Spirit is speaking to us, O Lord, and help us to live every day according to it, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time. I bless our family, so bless everyone in the church, O Lord, people who are not able to attend and those who are traveling, O Lord, we pray for them. To be safe, O Lord, keep them safe on your mighty wings, O Lord, and bring them back home safely, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed time. Keep us safe tonight, O Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the love of Father, grace of Son, Jesus Christ, come in the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you all for joining with us, and uh, may God bless you all.